Hi, Lou. Lou Shrubner. Hello, you steaming turd. Uh, 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 uh. Just relax. Because this isn't a conversation, it's a notice. A termination notice of everything that accounts for your pathetic little life. No, me first. Let me jog your memory. Labor Day weekend, 2005. You, your wife, at the time, us and the Shrivers. You got me? Six top at the gastro pub adjacent to the country club? The moment you took her call. Conflict of interest. No. No, no. Just because your wife survived the gravity of your fucking proto-human planet, if you think you're going to assist mine in any effort to win soul custody or felice me, and then wait two weeks before you ask her out on a date, I've heard about you, you fucking slug, you simian predator. I will fuck you. I'll report you to the bar. I will shut down your office. I will burn your home to the ground. I will find you at whatever hotel you check into. I'll garrote you in your sleep. Hang up, Lou. Hang up, you putz. What do you think? Hmm? Not so far from folks, you'll be alone. Not so close, you'll be crowded. Yeah. You comfortable? Dale would uh, like this sycamore tree, won't he? he? Used to put his little face up against the smooth sides, you know. Len would build a house up there. Hank, he'd burn it down. Yeah. The time has come. Say goodbye. You always have been my sweetheart, and you always will be. I want you to know that. It's hard to leave, Mary. Uh, I know you're not in there, but once I do, I'll start with the shovels. Forty-five years, who does that anymore? Just you and me. No kids. Courthouse, just that little place over on Spruce. How it used to make you laugh. We made each other laugh. We did. I'll be 
you back tomorrow. And every day after that, you're my sweetheart. into a different story. Okay, let me see. Let me check. It turns to another. Judge? We reserve the right to refuse service. Who are you looking for, tough guy? You. You are a lousy liar. How many jobs do you have? I'm the best liar I know. I'm a blue ribbon liar. I heard the judge took out Blackwell. Nice. Yeah, great state of Indiana's less impressed. So what are you gonna do? I'll leave. Not my business. I mean, how is it none of your business? You're a lawyer. He is your father. How is it none of your business? Here's the thing. He won't have me as a lawyer. I do not wish him as a client. We can barely stand the sight of each other. Yeah. How's that? Yeah, because he doesn't like you. Get over it. Accept it. You were a total fuck-up. What do you expect? Look, Hank, you leave now. Something bad happens to him. You will regret it. Every time that you think of your mom, every time you see Glenn or Dale, it will eat at you. Brett is a bitch. She's the gift that keeps on giving. Enough. I'm telling you. You know, I've been a lawyer for 16 years, right? Never once been a hooker with a heart of gold. There's no family first mobster. But this is new. This is a triple threat. Bartender, waitress, sage. Capable, seemingly, of solving any problem, large or small, with her unique blend of fucking honky-tonk, hoedown, Midwestern, world-weary, blue-collar advice. I don't want it. I don't need it. But I got some advice for you. How about trade school? Relax, everybody. We're just catching up. I had it coming. <sighs> so you were standing behind the register. Can you tell us what you saw? It was both up by the cooler. I saw the judge and... What should I call him? The dead guy? Try Mr. Blackwell, dummy! Ma'am. I've got this, Your Honor. So they were both by the cooler, and I assume they were... Mrs. Blackwell, justice for Mark is predicated upon me winning. Now, your late son cuts an unsympathetic figure, so it'd be really helpful as we proceed if you were the silent, grieving mother that potential jurors could see as the embodiment of your boy. However, it'll be really, really difficult to achieve sympathy with my foot up your ass or a gag in your mouth, one of which will occur if you open that venomous pie hole of yours again. Do you understand me? Have a seat, dear. It's gonna be okay. No further questions, Your Honor. job out there. Look, I know that Dad likes CP. I know you don't want to hear it. You need to step up, you know. Plan 
B. Kick it into gear. Do something. Huh? Get nasty. Get dirty. I know you can. Unlock the car. Come on, let's go. I'm gonna go home. This is it. Every case the judge has ever ruled. Okay. To win a reasonable doubt, we need the jury to sympathize with the judge. If we get them there, any evidence put in front of them, they're gonna see it our way. Say, Judge, what do you know about this Deputy Hanson? He's a transfer out from Detroit. Detroit to Carlinville, that reads right to you? The Sheriff White's higher. Merle says he's good, he's good. Okay. Dale, stop touching everything. No, Henry, no. For intent, they need premeditation, malice of forethought, and an indifference to human life. Okay. Brandeman. Brainerman. B R A N A M. Get him on the horn. Top forensics guy out of Chicago. Dale, back in my room. Bring it upstairs. Toxicology or paint chip? Tox. So, as it happens, Jim Powell, the cop who collected the blood from the caddy, was written up twice for storing blood evidence in his home fridge. This is good. Come on. He's raising three kids alone. It wasn't always possible for him to go straight to the lab. Jim Powell's an honorable man and will let you destroy his reputation. Hmm? Can I tarnish it? Tarnish? Yeah. You do love your words. <laughs> they have opportunity, motive, blood evidence, and the murder weapon. Hank, what do we have? Hope Stevens. If we can find a way to work her in, that's all we need. Check this out. Shelby Road, morning of the accident. You see that? Yep. Valpo is on the board. Mr. Palmer, Mark Blackwell appeared in your court prior to killing Miss Stevens, correct? Unlock the car. Come on, let's go. I'm gonna go home.
law. Hmm. All righty. Hey, well, thanks, Sam. How's the judge doing? Grumpy, thankless. This whole thing's gonna be awful for him. I'm in the shower. Yeah, All right, nice to see you, meet you. subject. Go to sleep. Thought I'd say good night. Yeah. Why were six afraid of seven? Because seven, eight, nine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just like your grandmother. <laughs> Do. Mind if we visit a little bit? You're here. Go ahead. Yeah. No. Out, please. Okay, Judge. Night, baby. Night, Dad. Grandpa. What? Will you sing to me? Me? <laughs> sing to you? Me? I can't sing. Yeah, but what kind of song do you like? Like a lullaby? Your grandmother always used to turn up the radio when I sang. 